Hi. In the last video, we came up with a chunking strategy for source code files. In this video, we will see how we can use it to index an entire repo in Chroma and keeping our index up to date as code changes. We have a repo and we want to index its files in a Chroma collection. We will assume that we have some abstraction for interacting with the local Git repo. There are many libraries in TypeScript and other languages that let you do this. To focus on the indexing logic, we will abstract this detail away for now. First, we'd like to ignore any file paths specified in the repo's git ignore. We will use the ignore package, which can help us parse a git ignore file and implement the appropriate filtering. We create a new ignore instance and add the .git directory. We don't want to index Git's local objects. Next up, let's create a Chroma collection. We'll have our function take in a Chroma client and create a new collection. For now, the name of the collection can be the name of the repo. And now we have to choose an embedding function and its model. Chroma has first-class support for many embedding providers who offer models for embedding code. You can choose from OpenAI, Cohere, Voyage, Mistral, Morph, and many more. In this example, let's use the OpenAI embedding function with the text embedding 3 large model. We'll install the Chroma Core OpenAI package and instantiate a new OpenAI embedding function. Next up, we'd like to recursively walk our repo and chunk every file that passes our git ignore filtering. Along the way, let's add chunks to our collection in batches. We'll create a helper function, add batch. It will take in the collection we want to add chunks to and the current array of chunks. Let's also have an optional batch size argument with a default of 100. OK, so we slice our batch out of the current chunks and call collection.add. We extract the ID and document content out of every chunk. And the rest of the fields of the chunk are going to be each record's metadata. Finally, let's return the remaining chunks. Back in our index all files function, let's write the recursive walk repo helper. It will take in the path of a directory you want to explore, read its entries, and then for every entry, let's get the file path and ignore it if it's filtered out by our git ignore. If the entry itself is a directory, we recurse into it. Otherwise, we call our chunk file function with the file path and the embedding functions model. We can get the model name from the embedding functions configuration. After chunk file is done, we add the results to our chunks array. And if we hit our batch size limit, we add a batch to our collection and update our chunks. Let's kick off the walk repo function on the repo's root directory and at the end, process any remaining chunks we have. OK, so we're able to index an entire repo. But what happens when files change? Let's make things more interesting. Say we're working on our repo's main branch in a clean state, and we just ran our index all files function. At this point, we have a Chroma collection that reflects exactly the state of our repo. But what if we make a new commit with some file changes, deletions, or additions of entirely new files? We can detect this and run our indexing logic again. But this may be very expensive to do frequently, and we also don't want to save duplicate data for files that don't change between commits, which may be most of the files. Chroma supports this versioning use case natively by giving us the ability to fork collections. This means that if we detect a new commit, we can reference the collection where we indexed our latest processed commit, fork it, find the diffs between the two commits, and update the forked collection only with the files from the diff. As a first step, let's create a collection where we keep a record of all the commits we indexed. The records in this collection will have an ID, which can be the commit ID, and a document, which can be the commit message. The record with our latest indexed commit will have a latest metadata field set to true. The name of our code index collections will correspond to the commit ID they were created from, so we can easily find them. Let's create an index function that implements this logic. We set up a new Chroma client. Again, I will use a cloud client here. And get or create our commits collection. 
We don't need a fancy embedding function here, so let's make sure to install the default from Chroma Core slash default embed. OK, we grab the head commit from this repo. And from the commits collection, let's find the latest commit we indexed. If we don't have one, we simply call our index all files function. But we need to modify it a bit first. It will have to know what is the commit ID it's indexing to set the correct collection name. So now, instead of naming the created collection by the repo, we simply pass the commit ID. We can now tell index all files that it's indexing the head commit. When it's done, we can update our commits collection by adding a record for the head commit with its ID, comment, and the latest meta tag set to true. We can then set the latest commit ID variable to the head's ID. At this point, we can check if our latest index commit ID is not the same as the repo's head. If that's the case, we want to fork and update the diffs. Let's create a helper function for that. We will have index diffs take in the repo, our Chroma client, and the IDs for the two commits, the old one and the new one. Using our git abstraction, let's get the diffs between the two commits. For simplicity, let's assume that we can extract the path of files that were added, modified, or deleted. Then we get the collection for the old commit and fork it for the new commit. For the diffs, we will use a simple approach. We will just delete all chunks from the forked collection whose file path metadata tag is included in any of the diff files. You can imagine a more subtle approach of detecting which individual chunks have changed, but we'll keep it simple here. So let's grab all the file paths from our diffs object and delete the chunks that came from these files. We will use the in operator for metadata filtering. Then we'll just run the modified and added file paths through our chunk file function and add the resulting chunks to the new collection. Again, we can get the embedding model name from the new collection's configuration. Since it's a forked collection, it will have the same configuration as the original one. Back in our index function, let's call this helper and update the commits collection. Now, the record for our old commit should no longer be the latest, and we add a record for the new commit. That was easy. What about supporting dirty state, where our repo has some uncommitted changes? This shouldn't be too different. Again, we can grab the collection for the head commit, fork it, and update files based on the diff between the state of the working tree and the head commit. In this case, we wouldn't record the forked collection as the latest, and we can instead use a dirty metadata tag. The name of the collection can also indicate that it was created from a dirty state. You can also imagine that this approach can be easily extended to support multiple branches. That's all for this video. In the final video in the series, we will use this indexing approach to build a coding agent. Our agent will be able to efficiently index a local repo and then use the correct collection to answer user questions. Thanks for watching.